Hi, good morning. Um, for your social studies assignment this week, you need to um, look at chapter 25 of our textbooks, textbook that talks about the Cold War. Um, and then there is a sheet for you to answer questions on that are here. This assignment is a little bit longer um, as, because you do need to look at the different sections of the textbook. Um, to answer the question. So this assignment will be due on Friday. Um, there will be your last assignment posted on Wednesday that will be due on Monday. Roots of the Cold War, Section 1, Why It Matters. Shortly after the Allies defeated the Axis powers in World War II, the Allies' wartime alliance broke down. The alliance was replaced by a struggle between the communist and non-communist nations. This struggle, known as the Cold War, would impact American life for nearly half a century. Growing distrust. <clears throat> Differences arose among the wartime allies even before the war had ended. In the final months of the war, Winston Churchill, Joseph Stalin, and Franklin Roosevelt had met at Yalta, a resort in the Soviet Union. There, Stalin promised to hold free elections in the parts of Eastern Europe under his control. At the time, Soviet troops were occupying most of Eastern Europe. Instead, Stalin proceeded to establish communist governments in these nations. He realized that free elections would result in non-communist governments. Stalin wanted to construct a ring of friendly countries to protect the western borders of the Soviet Union. After the ring had been built, Stalin hoped to make the Soviet Union the world's dominant power. Churchill expressed the fears of many in the West. Speaking at a college in Fulton, Missouri, he warned of the Soviet threat. An iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind the line lie all the capitals of ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. All these famous cities and populations around them lie in what I must call the Soviet sphere. Winston Churchill speech, Westminster College, March 5th, 1946. The term Iron, Cur Iron Curtain is a way of referring to a barrier to understanding information. Churchill's use of the term became a popular way of describing the conflict between the democratic nations of the West and the Soviet Union and the communist-controlled nations of Eastern Europe. By 1948, most of the nations of Eastern Europe had become satellites of the Soviet Union. A satellite is a nation that is dominated politically or economically by a more powerful nation. In addition, hostile communist threats loomed in Southern and Western Europe. The wartime alliance was among the Allies was no more. Containing Soviet Expansion The Cold War began at a time when many Americans worried about the nation's leadership. Harry S. Truman became president after the sudden death of Franklin Roosevelt in April 1945. Truman was not well known, and as vice president, his leadership had not been tested. However, President Truman wasted little time in showing his leadership qualities. The first Cold War challenges were faced in Greece, Iran, and Turkey. After the war, a communist-led revolt broke out in Greece. Greek communists threatened to take over the government. At the same time, the Soviet government began to threaten two nations on its southern border, Turkey and Iran. <clears throat> the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan In March 1947, President Truman made an urgent request to Congress to aid Greece and Turkey. He declared that the United States would oppose the spread of communism. He stated a principle that became known as the Truman Doctrine. It must be the policy of the United States to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressures. Harry S. Truman, Message to Congress, March 12, 1947. 
Truman's uh, policy of blocking communist expansion was known as containment. The goal of containment was to contain or limit Soviet expansion. Military aid alone could not contain communism. After World War II, much of Europe lay in ruins. Communists said the capitalist system was powerless to repair the damaged economies. Many desperate Europeans believed them. Communist parties gained strength in both Italy and France. To meet this crisis, Secretary of State George Marshall proposed a plan in June 1947 that called for the United States to provide economic assistance to European nations. Between 1948 and 1951, the United States loaned 16 Western European countries more than $12 billion. The Marshall Plan was a huge success. It helped countries such as France, West Germany, and Italy recover from the war. American dollars built new factories, schools, hospitals, railroads, and bridges. The Berlin Airlift. <clears throat> the focus of Cold War hostility now shifted to Germany. At the Yalta Conference, the Allies had agreed to divide Germany into four zones. American, British, French, and Soviet troops would control each of the zones. Germany's capital city, Berlin, which lay inside Soviet-controlled territory, was also divided into four zones. By 1948, the Western powers believed that it was time to reunite Germany. Stalin was bitterly opposed to this move. In June 1948, the Soviets set up a blockade around Berlin. They prevented delivery of food supplies to West Berlin's 2 million residents. Stalin gambled that the Western Allies would accept the communist takeover of West Berlin. However, the Allies responded with a massive airlift, sending cargo planes to deliver tons of supplies to the people. For almost a year, Western planes delivered supplies to West Berlin. The Soviets finally called off the blockade in May of 1949. In October, France, Britain, and the United States combined their zones into one country called the Federal Republic of Germany, or West Germany. The Soviet zone became the German Democratic Republican Republic, or the East Germany. The Cold War Crisis A divided Germany and Berlin remained a focus of Cold War tensions. Between 1949 and 1961, thousands of East Germans fled to West Berlin. From there, they went to West Germany. Suddenly, in August 1961, the East German government began building a wall between East and West Germany. For 28 years, the wall stood as a symbol of a divided Germany and a divided Europe. International Organizations after World War II, the United States played a leading role in creating the United Nations, or the UN. This move signaled a turn away from isolationism. The United Nations. The main goals of the UN were to maintain peace and settle international disputes. Under the UN Charter, member nations agreed to bring disputes before the UN. At the core of the United Nations are the General Assembly and the Secretary Council. Every nation, large or small, has a single vote in the General Assembly. However, the General Assembly has no way to enforce its decisions. The Security Council has far more power. Its decisions are supposed to be followed by all UN nations. The Security Council has 15 members. Five of them are permanent members, the United States, Russia, China, Britain, and France. Each permanent member has a power to veto or reject any proposal before the Security Council. If only one permanent member votes no, the Security Council cannot act. The UN's greatest successes have been in fighting hunger, and disease and improving education. 
Through relief programs, the UN has provided tons of goods, clothing, and medicine to victims of disaster. NATO and the Warsaw Alliance. In April 1949, as Cold War tensions rose, the United States and other Western nations established the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, a formal military alliance to guard against a Soviet attack. Members of NATO agreed that an attack on one member would be considered a t- on a, an attack against the entire group. In response, the Soviet Union and the satellite nations of Eastern Europe formed their own alliance, the Warsaw Pact, in 1955. <clears throat> the Shocks of 1949 Until 1949, most Americans were confident that the United States was safe because it alone knew how to build the atomic bomb. However, in September of 1949, the Soviet Union exploded its own atomic bomb. Now the Cold War seemed much more deadly. Each nation had within its uh, reach the power to destroy the other. Shortly after, Americans received a second shock. Since the 1930s, China had been a battleground between the Chinese nationalists and the Chinese communists. In the final months of 1949, the nationalist government collapsed. China fell under the control of the communists. Under their leader, Mao Zedong, the Chinese communists established the People's Republic of China. These Chinese nationalists fled to the island of Taiwan. The United States insisted that the Taiwan government was the legal government of China. It refused to recognize the People's Republic and kept the UN from admitting communist China to China's seat on the Security Council. Looking back and ahead, the United States faced a world in which the world's largest nation, the Soviet Union, and the world's most popular nation, China, were under communist rule. While fear stemming from the Cold War haunted Americans, they still held hopes for a better life after 15 years of depression and war. Please see the next recording to read section two.